Can I give you a quick example of permission marketing? How many people would prefer to get business that came in from the ads they place, or how many people would prefer to get business from people who were recommended to them? Can I see hands for ads that were placed? Can I see hands for people who would like to receive business from people who recommended them? Okay, for those at the front, no one put their, their hand up for ads that were placed. Every, well, and a, a large majority put their hands up. So these people are people who have given you permission to do your marketing for you. How much time, money and effort do you spend in encouraging those people to spread the word on your behalf? We're going to be taking a look at a lot of examples, and that is permission marketing. Talking to those that are listening, getting them to spread the word on your behalf, ensuring that you're tuning up those people and making sure that you're getting the best business. And the internet is great at this. The internet is rubbish at mass marketing. It's really poor at it. But still, we try to quite often take our traditional methods and force them on the internet. Let's take a quick look at television. What's happening here? Television audiences are in decline. Um, and one of the reasons that television audiences are in decline is that we're doing other things. This is the sub 35 year old market, the yellow line being where uh, so the amount of time they're spending on the internet, the blue line uh, seeing how much television they're watching. Then we've got other small mobile video and things of that nature. This is Q3 2008. And one line is going up, the other line is going down. Let's take a look at uh, what I think is one of the more interesting graphs um, that, that, that put it all into context. This is from BARB, the Broadcasters uh, Audience Research Association. Back, way back in 1981, ITV had 49% market share. That meant, well, 49% of people, if we advertised on ITV, we could be sure to reach half the TV viewing audience. When we get right down to it now, in 2008, they're down to 18%. Why? It's not the Channel 4, Channel 5, or anything else is coming at their lunch. Other has. This black line illustrates other. We're now watching the plethora of multiple channels that are out there, time-shifted channels, the TiVo channels, anything that we want to, to, to watch that enables us to skip the advertising, and it reduces the revenue-generating power of this mass medium. Next we're going to take a look at newspapers. Um, I use one example here, which is the Belfast Telegraph. Um, the, the Belfast Telegraph actually has had a year-on-year -year decline. The actual people who are reading the, the newspaper version are, are dropping dramatically. Our Sunday newspapers in the UK, the readership is down 50% than what, of what it was 10 years ago. Now we're not consuming less information, we're just consuming it differently. The argument isn't anymore about is marketing budgets shrinking, what's happening is marketing budgets are shifting. And the cool thing about the internet that we all have to, to really grasp, I think, with permission marketing is what the key to this is that we're connecting the searcher with the sought. And if you um, can link up someone who has a requirement with someone who has a product or service, it's a match made in heaven. Noisy old advertising doesn't do that, it throws enough to find some, some to stick whereas very targeted uh, connection with people who have a requirement um, works extremely well. And this is a book by a guy called Jeffrey Moore. I don't know how many of you are familiar with it. What happens is this is your customers. This is the bell curve of customers. And just to abbreviate it, we typically try to feel that we need to market to the mass market. And the reason we want a mass market is because we want everybody to know about us. What Moore argues very successfully and what many of the leading uh, companies around the world have done is they start talking to people that are listening here. And if you're really lucky, they'll tell someone else. And if they're really lucky, you will start to, 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 to come up with this curve. If you take a look at an iPod, I had an iPod in 2001. First iPod ads ran two years ago. You'd think this thing's new. It's not new at all. But I remember the launch of it. I was there watching the video, the online video, the day it came out, 23rd of October. I remember getting it. And this is what it's all about. Talk to those that are listening. And if we can talk to those that are listening rather than shouting at those that are not, we will find that we'll get our story to spread. And the more our story starts to spread, this is, this is the blend tech in a, in, a different, in, a, in, a, in a different slide. This is one of the things that's happening. What's happening now is that we now have a, a, a platform that we can gauge opinion. And it's the conversations that are driving sales. Let's take a look at uh, these two people. They're, 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 they're having a conversation. What happens is this lady here decides... I'm not going to listen to your advertising anymore. I want to find out what's going on. I'm going to go and buy, of all things, would you believe it, a blender. Could I have a name for this lady? Jemima. Jemima it is. 
Jemima decides that she's going to go to Amazon to buy this product. When she goes on, here looks like a relatively nice blender. It's a Russell Hobbs blender. Guess what Russell Hobbs have done? They've spent thousands and thousands and thousands on traditional marketing to get Marco Pierre White, of all people, the great chef, to come along and endorse their blender. In this, Marco Pierre White, at the age of 33, the youngest chef in the world to have won three Michelin stars. Now, we know he doesn't have a degree in electronics. He is not an engineer. How the hell could he have endorsed this blender? What does he know about it? I'll tell you where we're going to listen. We're going to listen to what the crowd says. All of a sudden, it's got three stars. What happens is we pull up the reason for the three stars, and in it it says, bought this three weeks ago, didn't like the speed adjustment system, it's poorly designed, powerful motor, blends well, not built to last. Has stopped working now, blade is cracked, although I've hardly used it in hard times. Cool Tom, the anonymous, has totally trumped the, bl the, the branding of Marco Pierre White. It's useless. It's money down the drain because we listen to the crowd rather than listening to the marketing spin. Email marketing. Email marketing is very frequently compared with direct marketing. There's one key difference. If you do direct marketing, you typically get a nice big success rate of, if you're lucky, 99% failure. Why do we continue to market with a failure rate of 99% or above? Email marketing will typically get you click-through rates when you're talking to those that are listening an engagement of over 30%. Let's just take a look at um, some of the interruption methods that we're seeing that are in, in decline. We have, when was the last time you bought something from a cold call? We have a hotel chain in Northern Ireland that placed an ad on the back of the Irish Times. Several thousand euros. It cost them for a 99 euro deal in Northern Ireland. They sold zero on the back of it. They did an email marketing campaign, sold 12 by lunchtime. We're seeing fragmentation in radio, we're seeing fragmentation in television. And here's one of the reasons why. The cost for traditional advertising in those mediums, CPM, the cost per thousand is around about £50. The high-end stats, that if you did the best ad in the world, you get 7% of people to remember. That's £750 for every thousand people, and you've no asset built. You want to do it and talk to these guys next, next week again? Go and spend another £750. These guys still haven't taken an action yet. You take the cost of email marketing, £25 per thousand, 30% engagement, it's £83 per thousand people you're engaging with. And you have a big asset built. You have their permission to talk to them again. You have their permission to engage with them further. And the question then is this. If we were to take a look at the costs of offline marketing with online marketing, an ad in a business magazine, 500 people, £500, it goes out to 10,000 readers. If you're lucky, 700 people remember your ad. If you're really lucky, 5% of those people then engage with your ad. You spend £500 to get 35 people. How much are you willing to spend on your list building strategy for talking to customers that are wanting to listen? How much are you willing to spend on your editorial and getting your copyright to ensure that the message that you're sending out is engaging and compelling? And quite often we look, because we send emails out within email marketing, and it's because when we do it day to day it's free, we think that our email campaigns should be treated the same way, but we don't put a value on the relationship of those customers. We will gladly pay for, for these 35 people, 500 pounds, but we will not gladly pay 500 pounds to get consent of 35 people to continue to market to them. And I think that's a, 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 a shift that we've got to, got to overcome. Here's one of the reasons why. Um, because this is how email is quite often perceived, and this is why email list rental doesn't work. How many of you have thoroughly enjoyed the queen, the queen and king of a third world country emailing you, asking you for your bank account details? They happen to have a trillion dollars, which randomly they have picked you to put in. So you can understand the chain mail, and let's just call it the pharmaceuticals email. <laughs> How many of those do you get that you're actually happy about? And the answer is actually none.